So in this video, we're gonna be looking at three different Shopify stores that are currently for sale on the Exchange Marketplace. If you've never heard of the Exchange Marketplace, then basically it's a place in which people can go to and sell their Shopify stores. So for people like us then, it's a really valuable resource because we can go into the site, see the stores that are for sale, and so long as they're not listed as private listings, we can see their turnovers, we can see their sites, we can see their best-selling products. And then from there, obviously we can go into Facebook, go into their Instagram pages, see the kind of ads they're running, find their products on AliExpress and essentially see their whole business set up. So in this video, I've got three different stores to show you, um, all completely different stores. I'm gonna start with this one, which is called Gnarly Tees, and it's a print-on-demand store. If you don't know what print-on-demand is, then basically it's a Shopify store in which you upload your designs to, and then when somebody buys one of those particular designs, then you then send that design to your printer and they will print it on the correct product. So for example, you can have mugs. Typically, the most common products are mugs, T-shirts, pillows, um, canvas designs you can list all of these things on your store when somebody buys it you then place that order with your supplier they will print it on demand and ship it directly to your customer so essentially it's just a different form of drop shipping print on demand has two main advantages number one being the shipping times over the traditional drop shipping from aliexpress obviously we're talking around about two weeks for delivery for physical products from china whereas with print on demand it's quite easy to find suppliers in England, suppliers in the US, suppliers in Canada. So typically you're only talking sort of three to five days. The second big advantage as well is that when it comes to adapting to current times, so for example, the current times we're going through now, it's really quickly and easy to adapt your product ranges to match. Let's give you an example then of this store here, particularly Gnarly Tees. Even though it is for sale, they are still selling, they are still trying to make as much money as possible being a business. We can have a look at their newest t-shirts they have Joe Exotic for President, which is obviously the Netflix um, series, which is just absolutely blown up in the past couple of weeks, um, called Tiger King. They have another t-shirt for those fans of the show that I got peed on by Tiger. If you haven't seen the series, then I recommend you go and watch it. It is just absolutely crazy. And then they've got a couple of t-shirts here from the cheerleading documentary, which my girlfriend watched and told me about. So that is kind of like the two biggest advantages, obviously, as long as you've got an eye for design, and then it's pretty lucrative business and pretty easy to kind of create products to the particular audience or to whatever is popular at the current time. So to give you a bit of a background information then on this particular store, in the past five years, they've done 2.4 million, 2.3 million, sorry. Um, so some pretty decent numbers. So there's a lot to be learned from this particular store and the traffic is 2.5 million visits. If we head across to their store, then you can see it looks pretty decent. Everything's professional, trustworthy looking. Let's have a look at this product example um, to begin with. The main thing you should be learning from these stores is number one is the products they're selling because if they're best selling products for million dollar stores, then obviously they're in demand. And the second thing as well is their product pages. The product page is like your first impression with your customer. Obviously it's when somebody clicks a link on your ad, this is the page it goes to. So this is the page that needs to give off a good impression. Looking at this product page then just very quickly, having a quick glance, I can see all the required information I need to place an order. All of these are kind of like radio buttons that you can select. So there's no need to kind of click on a drop down, then select the size or then select the color and then hit add to cart. Trust me, those little kind of design changes um, can make all the difference. The quicker and easier you make it for somebody to make a purchase on your store, um, then the higher your conversion rate will be. There was a study done a couple of years ago now about Amazon and it was estimated, I don't know how true this is, but it was still pretty shocking that an extra one second, so one tiny little second on Amazon's load pages could cost them up to $2 billion every single year just because of that extra time customers would spend on their store. There's obviously more time for them to get distracted. So where possible, just try and include these buttons here. There are apps on the Shopify app stores. I can't remember the name of the app now, but there's one that's really cheap, about $5 a month that allows you to do this instead of drop downs. And like I said, it pretty much halves the amount of clicks that a customer has to do. If we have a look at our little Chrome extension for free, um, it's 100% free, you guys can install it on your browser too for free, it's called Shopify Inspector. Um, it's a really handy little tool, within a few seconds you can find their best selling products and this is indeed their best selling product. So this particular store that did 2.3 million in revenue, this is their very best selling t-shirt. So if print on demand does interest you, then this would be a great store to kind of get familiar with, have a look at their best selling designs and then use them to kind of inspire and create your own. A couple of other points before we move on to the next store as well is 
Number one is kind of like the contact details and information about this store. Every legit business will provide this information. So if you're not providing it, it may look a bit suspicious to customers and in return or as a result, it will harm your conversion rate. So number one is they have opening times, which is typical for a business, obviously. And then if we go to their contact us page, you can see they've got a contact form. And I think in fact, it may have been on their Facebook page. It was, they have a phone number you can ring to. This is something that I see not a lot of people doing. Now, if you don't feel comfortable about putting your personal phone number on there, there are out of phone message services that you can get for pretty cheap, like 20 pounds a month. But trust me, you only have to say convert one or two orders to pay for that service to make it worth it. Something I wanna to touch on too is how many likes this page has. Even though they've been in business for five years, they only have two and a half thousand people liking their Facebook page. So when you hear people talk about social proof, you don't, you, or you might not need as much as you think to get the results that you're hoping for. So anywhere over kind of like a thousand likes typically is enough to kind of satisfy someone's kind of hesitations to whether you're a legit business or not. Store number two is a company called GetShoeLove.com. Um, a really interesting store, kind of like a one product store that I wanna share with you. But first, let's start with some background information. So average monthly revenue is about $35,000. They do hold inventory. However, if you did want to drop ship, this could be a kind of store and brand that you build drop shipping. And then if it proves successful, then progress into sourcing products in bulk. Um, in terms of their total monthly revenue, looking at just short of half a million over the course of the past two years, kind of a slow start, but they build things up pretty quickly um, after the first few months. And it is still very much an active store, as you can see. So March last month this year, they did $26,000 total traffic, quarter of a million, um, and then a few more details about their expenses. In terms of how they drive the traffic, we can clearly see that the majority of this is coming from Facebook. As you can see, they're spending 22 grand a month on average running Facebook ads. If we take a look at their store then you can see they've got this kind of like repeating video as kind of like the banner image which transitions into this. And um, one thing I do want to say is that make sure you get feedback on your own stores before you start running ads. This is why this is kind of like another crucial process um, and learning tool to do because it doesn't matter how much money you spend on any sort of advertising whether it's an influencer shout out, Facebook ads or Instagram or Google Ads, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If you haven't got a professional looking Shopify store, you're not gonna see the sales that you're hoping for. So if we go straight to their products to see their product ranges, you can see their whole store is kind of geared up and based around um, caring for your shoes. Now, to be honest with you, being somebody who isn't that interested in shoes, I never thought it was that much of a big market. Certainly when you go into shoe stores and trainer stores, there isn't much of a section for taking care of your shoes. So I decided to do a bit of research into the market size and little did I know that it's absolutely huge. So if you are somebody who's interested in shoes, taking care of your shoes, the latest shoe releases, I know there's like crazy kind of hype around certain shoe releases, then this would be an ideal business for you. In terms of the products, now you haven't got to go straight away to sourcing in bulk. You can go into AliExpress and you can find tons and tons of different products. Like this product here, the number one bestseller is 22,000 orders, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, so there is places to start. You can start with dropshipping. Dropshipping is not absolutely everything or your only option. It's a great way to test products. So to kind of begin with on a small budget to test if something works before you commit financially to a bulk quantity of something, then it's a really ideal business model to start with. So certainly you can come on here, start with a certain range of products, and then once you kind of gain that um, following and gain that customer base, then look to progress into sourcing your products in bulk. So if you're not quite sure on where your starting point would be in this particular space, if we take a look at what their best selling product is, then obviously that's gonna be um, the best place to start with. So it's the Shoe Love Shoe Cleaner Kit. You can see it's some kind of, um, by the looks of it, a motorized cleaning brush um, in combination with some different brush heads um, and some sort of cleansing foam. So if you could find this on AliExpress, then obviously it'd be a great place to start. And then where I would kind of begin is obviously getting all your social media pages um, online and then start reaching out to some micro influencers sort of around the 10,000 followers mark where they're more likely to work with you for free in return for a free product like this and what they could give you is perhaps three to five different pieces of content that you can then use for your Facebook ads 
um, for shout outs, for whatever it is, a multitude of different reasons. Moving on to the third and final store then of this video, we have alphasoul.com. Again, it was another market that I just didn't realize how big it actually was. Um, basically, they sell um, compression stocks, but we'll be looking at those in a second. To start with the background information, we have average monthly revenue of $76,000 with an average monthly profit of $15,000. Kind of a bit of a backstory um, into kind of how old they are. They're two years old. Their main revenues are kept consistent by Facebook ads, Google ads, and email flows. One thing I do want to show you about this store is if you look, their mailing list, it has 40,000 people on it. It's something you don't hear many people talking about or many people implementing, but trust me, start gathering emails from day one as much as you can and keep remarketing to them on a monthly basis because when you have 40,000 people on an email list and you can bring in a pretty decent revenue every single month pretty much for free obviously you'll have to pay for your service provider but but apart from that the return on your investment is going to be super high a total revenue which we can see on screen now over the course of the past kind of 18 months is about two million dollars they do have an inventory value of two hundred thousand dollars which is a crazy amount of stock and again, that might seem pretty overwhelming having to commit to those sorts of levels of um, stock numbers and where to keep them. But again, you don't have to. You can go into AliExpress. There's tons of different compression socks that you can start with by drop shipping. And then when you see that initial success, get a bit of cash in the bank. You can then progress to sourcing these products in bulk and getting them branded as well. A product like this is super ideal for sourcing in bulk too because super cheap to make, super cheap to ship because on a pallet you could probably get five to 10,000 pairs maybe. And obviously if you're talking maybe four or 500 pounds for a pallet by UPS, then you divide that down by the cost of five to 10,000 pairs of socks and you're talking a few pence per order. So there's super high amounts of profit to be made in a product like this if you can bring the traffic in and make the sales. So in terms of the actual website then, if we go back to the homepage, you can see it's a pretty standard layout. It looks like the Brooklyn theme with a big banner image at the top. Um, and then I've got some different information about their products, the different ranges and benefits, etc. What I've also just noticed that these guys are doing is they've got some comments here um, from Vogue, New York Times, um, companies most people have heard of. If you are within the kind of compression sock space or have a need for products like this, then chances are you've probably heard of these guys as well. And just reading through this now, they're not actually directly talking about this business and their particular products, but by having their logo and their comments on there, it's, all, it's a good way of kind of validating your products and almost building off the back of this some sort of social proof and credibility. If we have a look at their best selling products, then we can use our handy Chrome extension Shopify inspector straight to the best sellers. And it's the Alpha Copper infused um, compression socks for $30. And if we have a look at some different products on AliExpress, we'll filter it by orders to get the best ones. Um, we can see £3.45, £2.35, £1.82, £2.40. So there's some pretty decent and healthy profit margins to be had. If we take a look at their product page, you can see it's pretty professional looking. They've got a really nice large image um, of the particular product. They've got the dynamic checkout button to this straight away shows people that you accept PayPal. And as a new business, trust is kind of like one of the biggest issues that you'll have. So by showing people you accept PayPal, it builds that trust with them because everybody knows PayPal to be kind of like a safe way um, to spend your money basically. They have a video on YouTube which is really good. The more you can show actual real life people using your product, having a benefit, having a good time using that particular product, then the more kind of validity, if that's a word, or the more credibility and more social proof it gives your product which is gonna do good things for your conversion rate. What they've also done as well is they've bullet pointed the key benefits to this particular product which is always really good if you have like quite an extensive product description then it's always really good to kind of point out the key information because the chances are somebody's going to read through every single piece is quite slim so if you have certain words in bold or bullet pointed like this it kind of draws their attention naturally to the key benefits and the positives about your product which is a good thing because if you can leave a positive imprint in your customer's mind about your particular products then obviously they're more likely to buy it and then they go on to obviously list the different reviews 
To finish this store off then, I wanna end by showing you the Facebook ad library. For these guys, you can see all the different video ads that they're currently running. Now these guys aren't running any ads in the UK, so these are other countries, most likely the US, giving the fact that they're advertising free shipping to the USA. And the key takeaway I want you to have then from this set of different ads and from this particular business is just to test as much as you can to see what works. If we just kind of take like a scroll through, you can see that's one particular video ad, two video ads, three video ads, four video ads, five video ads, six, I think that one's been done before, um, seven, eight, nine. So they must be testing perhaps 10 different style of video ads. There's different kind of ad creatives at the top too. So you can see they've kind of spaced, they haven't spaced it out here, sorry. They've had like a paragraph approach. And then if we go to the bottom, um, they've had more use of emojis. They've kind of separated it line by line, got to the point, got to the call to action a lot quicker. So they're obviously testing a lot of different things to see what works best. And this is something that you should adopt in your own business as well. And with that being said, then I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Um, thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate all the support on the channel recently it really does mean a lot so thank you please don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to subscribe either it's something like 60 percent of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed so for that regular content please do make sure you subscribe and finally then if you are looking for a step-by-step -step program um, that comes with my full support and guidance, please check out my Ecom Academy. There will be a link in the video description below, which will take you to the page, which will show you all the different information, testimonials, all the different content it covers, all the different kind of support um, and resources that you'll get included as well. That being said then guys, thanks very much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it and hopefully see you in the next one.